Hello. In part one, we looked at some simple mathematics in finding turning points in our time series data. I showed how we can use a differencing method to find those turning points. In part two of this video series, we'll look at applying the difference method in Python to a, a few very simple examples of time series. So moving on to the code, we first need to import numpy as np and then import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So this uh, will give us access to the scientific computing packages via NumPy and the 2D plotting libraries in Python. So firstly, I'm going to show how to use the non-zero method to obtain locations of our turning points. So I have in this example a 3x3 three three matrix called X with values 1, 0, 0, 0, 3, 2. So I want to find the non-zero values in that matrix, so the actual locations are where they are. So to do that, we have X dot non-zero, open round brackets, close round brackets. And then we'll print the results. So I'll run that now and we can see what we get. So as you can see here, we have two arrays. The first array gives us the location of the elements that are non-zero in the row. And the second array is the column location. So the first non-zero value was in this position, which is 0, 0. Now remember, in Python, everything starts at 0. Uh, so mathematically, you would say that's uh, 1, 1, row 1, column 1. But in Python, we call that row 0, column 0. So the other locations of our non-zero values are in row 1 which would be row 2 in, you know, in other notation, and column 1, so that's the 3, and the last one is in row 1 again, but column 2, so that's the 2. The next example is an array with values 2, 1, 2, 3, and 2. It has one minimum turning point, with a minimum value of 1 and one maximum turning point with value 3. These turning points are located at the array index of 1 and 3. To find these turning points, we will need to do second differences using the diff method. And any second differences that are greater than 0 will be our minimum turning point, and any values that are less than 0 will be our maximum turning point. The next example is an array with values 2, 1, 2, 3, 2. It has one minimum turning point at index location 1, a value 1, and it has one maximum turning point at location index value 3 of value 3. To find these uh, turning points, we will do second differences using the diff method. And any second differences that are greater than 0 will be our minimum turning point, And any values less than 0 will be our maximum turning point. The diff method is accessed by writing np.diff. So firstly, I'm going to run this code and see what it will give us for the first and second difference values. So with the first differences, we can see that the first value is minus 1. So this is gotten by 
subtracting the 1 in index location 1 from the value 2 in index location 0, which gives us our minus 1 value in the first location of first differences. So we can see looking at the second differences, the 0 for location in the array has value 2, which is greater than 0 and therefore indicates a minimum turning point. The maximum turning point is at the index location 2 with a value of minus 2. However, if we look at the original values of, of the example, the minimum turning point was at index location 1 and the maximum turning point was at index location 3. So we need to add 1 to the index value to identify the correct location of the turning points. By checking the second difference against the conditions around whether it is greater or less than 0, we'll return a true-false Boolean value. The non-zero method will interpret a true value as being non-zero. So let's run the code. With the condition greater than zero, we get our local minimums. We see that the value in index location zero is true, which indicates that it is a local minimum. We also run this checking for where the second differences are smaller than zero to find our local maximums. As expected, at index location 2, we get a true value indicating a local maximum. I've also outputted the results from the non-zero method, which gives index locations 0 and 2 for the location of the turning points. But when we look at the original data, our actual turning points are at location 1 and location 3. So we need to add 1 to each of these locations. So if we add 1 to the non-zero method that we have applied with just around brackets, we will get an error. This is because we are trying to add a 1, which is a scalar, to two arrays. It is only valid to add a 1 by 2 vector, say 1, 1, to the two arrays. However, the second array is empty, as we only specified a 1 by n array, and not an n by n matrix. So we can disregard the second empty array by writing in square brackets a zero plus one. So we've done this for the local minimum and the local maximum. So when we run that, we'll get the correct results. So as you can see here, the first turning point is at location 1, and that is correct. And the other turning point is at index location 3. And that is the local turning point at index location 3. Another reason to do this is that this array will give us the y values for the location of the turning points. And not doing this will likely throw up an error when we try to plot it 
as the two-dimensional plot is only expecting a 1 by n array. In the next example, we look at a time series with three turning point minimums and four turning point maximums. We're, we are then going to locate the local minimums and maximums and plot the results. I'm using the label statement to mark the turning points against the time series plot. So let's run this code. And as you can see, we have correctly located local minimums and the local maximums. I'll stop the video here. In part three, um, I am going to add some extra features to our time series data example. This will show us that we need to refine the mathematics presented so far. So if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, or if you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. If you really like this uh, video series, please subscribe to my channel, Python Statistical. Thank you for watching.